Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're installing a set of super bright LED driving lights from Rivco onto this 2018 Honda Goldwing Tour. Your driving lights from Rivco are labeled L and R for left side and right side installation. And left and right refers to the side of the motorcycle as you're sitting on the bike. The first step is to remove the fog light covers. Now here I'm the removing the one that's on the left side of the motorcycle. Now it appears on the right in the picture because we're facing the bike. But this is actually the left side fog cover. And you're using a 5 millimeter Allen wrench to remove the two bolts that hold this fog light cover in place. Keep these bolts in a bowl or a place where you'll be able to find them because we'll need these for reinstallation later. With the bolts removed, you can now remove the fog light cover as shown. You basically just tilt it to the outside and it will come off. You can see the little tabs that kind of hold it in place. And you want to go ahead and do this for the right side fog light cover as well. Now I'm using a pair of wire cutters to snip these little tabs that hold this fog light cover in place. You could use a, a small saw or maybe even a utility knife, but I like these little wire cutters. They just clip right through the plastic. And then you can use a small file uh, if you need to, to clean up any of those little nubs that are kind of left, left over after you've taken off those, uh, uh, those little tabs. So go ahead and do this for both of the fog light covers. On the right side of the motorcycle, I'm going to remove this 12 millimeter bolt that is used to hold the horn in place. And I'm going to do that with a 12 millimeter wrench. Now we're ready to install the right side driving light. You'll notice it's marked with an R. And the bracket is going to go on top of the bracket for the horn. So we just reuse the exact same 12 millimeter bolt, put it through both brackets and reinstall it on the motorcycle. But you just want to get it finger tight for now. Before we completely tighten this bolt, you want to make sure the bracket is not touching that horn. You also want to make sure the horn is not touching the front of the engine. Otherwise, this is going to affect how your horn performs. Now that I've I've got the fog light not touching the horn, and the horn is in a good position. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this bolt down. Once the mounting bolt's firmly installed, you can still adjust the light left to right or up and down using uh, the bracket that's attached. Now we're ready to route the wire coming out of the back of the driving light behind the frame and kind of down underneath that lower inner cowl. Uh, there's a kind of a black plastic cowl on the front that we're going to kind of loop this behind. We're going to kind of hook it down there and go behind. Then we'll go on the other side of the bike and pull it through. And it will tuck down uh, behind that little plastic uh, uh, lower cowl piece. You can see it here. And now I'm looking at it from the left side of the bike. And we're just going to kind of, you might even have to use a screwdriver or some little tool to kind of stuff that wire down. But it will fit back behind that little piece. Now we can install the left side driving light in the same manner as we did on the right side. You just remove the 12 millimeter bolt and put the bracket over the uh, horn bracket and make sure the horn is not touching anything and tighten her up. Now we're ready to connect the wires coming from the lights to the wire harness. It's pretty simple to understand. The red wires go to the red uh, wires coming out of the harness and the black wires connect to the black coming out of the harness. So you really can't mess this one up. For the next step, you need to open the left saddlebag and remove the left side cover so we can access the battery and the fuse box. By pressing the tabs on the side of the fuse box, you can just pull it straight out and remove it. I'm using a 36 inch cable tie to fish the wires from the front of the bike back to the fuse box. You could use a coat hanger for this or any stiff piece of wire. Basically you want to fish it behind the engine as shown here and it will come out uh, up kind of in front behind the frame but up in the front of the bike as, as I'm showing you here. Now what I want to do is I'm going to tape the longest wire on the harness 
uh, the one you'll see here in just a second. It's the one that has the terminal connection on the end of it as this you know, little round connection. We're going to tape it up using, I'm just using masking tape, and then we can pull that all the way through uh, back to basically the side of the engine. And now I'm going to fish it uh, underneath that large frame member. And once I get my cable tie behind that frame member, it's kind of down in between the fuse box and the frame down in there. I'm using some hemostats to grab it because I can't quite get my hand in there. Now with a coat hanger, you probably wouldn't have to do this. But I'm just pulling that cable tie up. You can see what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get the wires uh, hidden and out of sight. So basically pull the wires through. I'm going to remove the tape. And then we're going to be ready to... Uh, uh, attach this to the fuse box. The green wires you see in the picture are for some other accessories I have, so don't worry about that. You want to remove the very top screw on the fuse box, top left, and that's where we're going to install uh, the wire that we just fished through as shown. And once you've tightened it down firmly, then you can uh, replace the fuse box cover. If we go back to the front of the motorcycle, on the left-hand side, I want you to locate this 8 millimeter bolt that's basically in the front of the engine. It's next to that frame rail you see there on the right. And we want to loosen that 8 millimeter bolt using a socket. I used a, a socket and a little ratchet to loosen it. You don't want to remove it. You just need to loosen it enough to slip this little ground wire. It's a short black wire coming out of the wire harness. Uh, has a little U-shaped uh, terminal connector on the end, and you'll slip it underneath that 8 millimeter bolt, then tighten it down. Now we're ready to run the wire with the little switch on the end. It's a shielded wire, and you can see it's going to help you if you have a little flashlight to use because it's very dark up here. And we're going to basically move that wire all the way up to where it comes out up near the handlebars up there by the console. Now here you can see I've cable tied that wire uh, to a wiring harness that already exists. You can, just to give you a perspective, we're on the left-hand side of the bike looking up. You can see the radiator hose down at the bottom right, and there's the cable tie and uh, our shielded wire. Now, if we move a little further up through that tunnel, you'll find a, a hydraulic, a little hydraulic uh, pipe that we can also use a cable tie to connect our wire to. And this is how the wire eventually comes out. It comes out between the steering head and the frame. And you'll notice I've used another cable tie. Uh, there's a little bracket that's really meant to hold a uh, hydraulic pipe for a clutch transmission. I have a DCT, so this hole is not used. So you can cable tie to that hole. If you have a manual transmission, uh, you can cable tie to the little hydraulic pipe that's there. Now here you can see where I chose to locate the switch on the black plastic part. I'm at the front of the motorcycle on the left side looking back so you can kind of tell where I am. And the reason I chose this position is because uh, it's just easier for me to deal with. Now you can also locate it up there where the red circle is on the top shelter on the painted part. The problem with that location is if you ever need to remove your top shelter, say to replace an air filter, you'd have to take the switch off. So I like it mounted where I chose to. One thing you want to be careful of, do not mount the switch on the black plastic anywhere where these little red circles are warning you not to mount it. The reason is when you turn your handlebars all the way to the left, you could hit the switch. To complete our installation, I'm going back to the front left side of the motorcycle and I'm going to attach the relay to the frame rail using one of those little cable ties. It kind of goes behind the frame rail as shown here. And here is the wire, the shielded wire that goes up to our switch. And then you have the other small wire uh, that goes all the way back to the fuse box, which we connected earlier. And you'll notice that the wires going to the lights face down. So you want to mount the relay on the frame rail so that the, the switch lights go down. Everything else kind of goes up. Now before putting the bike all back together, it's a good time to test the lights. Make sure everything's working. Turn your bike on. Uh, press the switch and make sure the lights come on. And you can also use this time to adjust the lights before you go for a ride. 
Rivko recommends that you have your lights adjusted so that they shine downward and uh, kind of to the outside of the motorcycle. Now you can adjust the horizontal uh, positioning of the lights using this 10 millimeter nut and uh, bolt. And then of course you can adjust the vertical positioning using the little, the smaller eight millimeter and it rotates on a swivel. If your lights are working correctly, you can go for a test ride and you don't have to put the fog light covers back on. Uh, you could leave them off until you get the lights adjusted the way you like them. Now here I've got the lights off and you'll see in a second when I turn them on the difference. Uh, just really lights up the road, especially a lot of fill light between the front of the bike and, you know, where the headlights would normally start lighting up the road. So this is my first test ride. I've got the lights adjusted pretty well, I think. You can see what the difference is when I turn them off. Now, it'd be easier to tell on a dark street, and I'll get a little bit better street here in a second for you to see the difference. But now they're off, and when I turn them back on, it's just a huge, huge difference. There's so much more light that going out to the side. It's hard to tell with a GoPro camera, but you can really see the difference in how they light up the road. Now here I'm on a street close to my house I'm familiar with. There's a pretty dark stretch up ahead and not much traffic, so it's a little easier to see. I've got the lights off right now. But when I turn these on, I can see a sign about 300 yards away that I couldn't even see before I turned the lights on. Here you can see in the top photo that little light, that's a sign that's lit up about 300 yards away. And you'll notice you can't even see it in the picture down below. You know how sometimes you'll have a body clip in a weird place and you can't get your hand you know, into that little tight space or, or maybe there's a wire that you can see it with a light but you can't get to it. Well, I got a tool for you that can help with that situation. These are hemostats and uh, they're available. Actually, they're for medical use and you can buy them on Amazon.com. I'll put a link down below for you. And these are really cool because they're thin enough to fit in really tight, cramped spaces and once you grab something, you can lock the little handle in place and then free up your hand to pull it out or do whatever you need to do. So this is a great little addition to your toolkit. They're, they're not expensive at all. And I use them all the time on almost every job I end up using these hemostats. So if you like this tip and you're enjoying this video, please take a second to subscribe by clicking that little button down below. And if you click the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you the next time I come out with a new video. Thanks again for stopping by Cruise Man's Garage.